In section 8.2, we're going to talk about perimeters of composite shapes. So what is a composite shape? Well, a composite figure or a composite shape is made up of triangles, squares, rectangles, semicircles, and other two-dimensional figures. These are just examples. Basically, the easiest way to put it is it's multiple shapes, like mushed together to give you one bigger shape. So here we have a square and a triangle put together. And we don't actually, some people are like, well, wait a minute, is this a trapezoid? It is. This is a trapezoid. But the problem is, is like, you can use the formula of a trapezoid to find the area. But here, there is no formula that's called this or this shape. So you'd actually have to find the perimeter of the rectangle and the semicircle and go from there. So this shape is made up of a semicircle and a rectangle. To find the perimeter of the composite figure, you're going to have to find the distance around each figure. So here you'd have to find the distance around three sides of the rectangle and the distance around a semicircle. All right. So estimating the perimeter using grid paper. I'm not going to estimate this because the, your book or the book we're using for this is actually, it's not, it's not thinking you know Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. We absolutely do. So we're not going to estimate. And we're going to actually go one step further and do better than that. We're going to find the actual perimeter of the arrow. So the perimeter of the arrow, let's start with the easy side. The easy side, I'm going to highlight in black. We know this is 2, and I'm going to mark this as 2. We know this side here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. This would also be 6. This is 2. So if we add that up, let's see, that's 10 plus 10. That's going to be 20. So the black part is just 10 units. But now we have to find the distance, and I'm going to mark this in red, of these two pieces. You should know the distance formula. But because we don't know how actually points here, we can make up our own. But we can use Pythagorean theorem. Yay, Pythagorean theorem. I'm just going to turn this into a triangle. I want to find the length of C. We know this is a right angle, so this is a right triangle. So I could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, let's count. a is what? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 squared plus b is also 4. 4 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. That gives me 16 plus 16, which gives me c squared. That gives me c squared equals 32, and you know we have to take the square root of each side. So that would be c squared equals uh, root 32. Now, we could simplify that. I'm actually going to take you to, honestly, this is high school math, 8th grade high school math right here. I'm going to leave it as root 32. Well, how many of those root 32s we have? Well, we know this is root 32. And we know this is root 32. So both of them together would be root 32 plus root 32, which you might understand this. It's like saying x plus x. There's a 1 in front. That's 2x. This is 1 plus 1. So actually we have two root 32s plus 20. And then units would be your answer. That's actually, in high school terms, how you would write the answer, the exact answer. 2 root 32 plus 20 because the square root of 32 is going to give me a, um, a decimal, which is fine, but an exact answer would be this. Now, if, we, if you don't understand that, that's okay. I, I like took you to high school math right now. So if you actually did this, let's say you go back to root 32 and you took the square root of that, that's approximately 5.7. So this is approximately 5.7. So we could take 520, plus 5.7, plus 5.7, and I'm going to do this. So 5.7 plus 5.7 is 10 point, uh, no, I'm sorry, 11.4.
And so this would give me 31.4 units. I would accept either one of these as answers. Now, right now, 31.4 units would be what I expect, but if you want to go one step up from that and leave it just as a root and not square root it, that's fine. Now, once again, if you had, for example, 36 in here, the square root of 36 would be 6. You would use 6. But it's up to you what you would like to do. So in example two, we're going to find the perimeter. The figure is made up of a semicircle and a triangle. Find the perimeter. Well, the triangle part is really easy. So we just have 14 there. 14 feet. I don't know what that is, but that is not 14 feet. So 14 feet. This is a semicircle. So we're going to do circumference equals, well, it looks like we have the diameter of 10. So I'm going to use pi times d, but then we have to take half of that. So 3.14 multiplied by 10. Well, that would be 31.4 divided by 2. Gives me approximately 15.7. Now, some people are like, Mr. Humphreys, why is it approximate? Because if you multiply that and divide it by 2, you get exactly 15.7. Well, remember, we're approximating pi as 3.14. So... The semicircle would have a perimeter of 15.7. We add that to the 8 and the 6 of the triangle. And that would give me about 29.7 feet. In example 3, we're going to find the perimeter of a running track. Now, I normally would not even give you this. And I'll tell you, I will not give you this in any tests or quizzes. I will not tell you that it's made up of anything. I'll just say we have a running track, and you have to come up with this all on your own. So here's the running track. We have to find the perimeter of this running track. So let's start with the easy part. So I'm, gonna, I'm just actually going to redraw this, a smaller scale. So the distance from here to here and here to here they're each 100. But I need to find the distance around the outer sides. So if I find the distance around the ends, these, this is a semicircle and this is a semicircle, if I smush them together, I get a circle. So I want to find the circumference of the circle. Pi multiplied by d. So circumference equals 3.14 multiplied by the diameter. But it looks like the, di uh, the radius is 32. So that means the diameter then would be 64. And this would give me approximately, let's see, 3.14 times 64. That gives me approximately 201 or 200.96 if you actually read it or wrote it as the, to the nearest hundredth. But then I have to add the 200 onto that. The 100 here and the 100 here. And that would give me approximately 401 meters. So the track has a perimeter of about 401 meters. Your vocab for section 8.2 is composite figures.